Welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend that takes us into meteorological winter in every sense. First and foremost, things are going to get a bit colder, but still for many, it'll be a fine, bright, sunny day on Thursday. The really interesting weather looks like taking place Friday and Saturday. A deep area of low pressure coming down the North Sea is going to bring a spell of very windy conditions. And combined with that colder air, it could also provide some snowfall. Beyond that, well, it stays generally on the cool side. It looks like temperatures next week will be a little higher than they will be for the next few days, but mostly around or a touch below average with some wet weather, most likely across the northwest. More on that in a moment. So first of all, we need to focus in on the medium term and things getting lively through the uh, latter part of this week. Let's take a look at the bigger picture and focus on what's going on high up in the atmosphere with the jet stream. The jet stream is kind of in this arching position across the North Atlantic. And as we run through the next five or six days, it doesn't really shift. It maintains this kind of arched pattern through the weekend and even beyond. OK, by the time we get to early next week, it's not perhaps quite as strong, but it is still in that similar position. What that means is that our winds will be mostly coming in from the north or the northwest. Let's rewind now and focus in on one particular area of the jet stream at the moment. If we take the winds off and just focus in on the, uh, the purple patch here, this notice this darker colour, that zone of enhancement, that zone of stronger conditions within the jet stream. This is known as a jet streak. And um, as that jet streak crosses Greenland through Wednesday and Thursday, Notice what happens to the surface pressure pattern. An area of low pressure is born and that jet streak, that little enhancement of the jet stream drives this low with the arching position of the jet and turns it into quite a vicious feature. Isobars popping out of it, it's developing, it's intensifying because of its interaction with the jet stream. That low will then provide some pretty lively weather through Friday and into Saturday. Initially, these weather fronts will bring wet and windy weather sinking their way southwards. But as the low drives down through the North Sea, notice that squeeze in the isobars on Friday evening across northern Britain and then lots of isobars covering the country on Saturday. So some very strong winds likely, something we haven't seen much of so far this autumn. Very strong winds expected, particularly across the north on Friday and then across almost all areas for a time on Saturday. Why so intense? Well, actually, watch this area of low pressure again. It heads down slowly south through the North Sea, but actually it's this little feature here, a little weakness in the isobars. Actually, closely, look closely, another area of low pressure develops spawned by that low, and that really does then squeeze those isobars together. Now, a lot's got to come together for that to happen, of course, that interaction with that jet streak over the next couple of days. So some uncertainty about the exact timing and position of the strongest winds, but it's something we need to keep a very close eye on. So initially we have a warning out for the winds across northern half of the UK on Friday. Say so some uncertainty about the exact intensity and the exact timing, but particularly late Friday across uh, northern parts of Scotland, gusts around coasts 70, maybe 80 miles an hour. And anywhere in this yellow zone, gusts of 50 to 60 miles an hour. And then on Saturday, one extra day ahead, so a broader area covering most of the UK, yellow warnings uh, for gusts again of 50 to 60 miles an hour, but perhaps around coasts, particularly northeast England, eastern Scotland of 70, and exposed areas maybe 80 miles an hour. Broad area at this stage, as I said, there's a lot to come together, so some uncertainty will likely to hone down on this system and the warnings over the next couple of days, so stay up to date. That's not the only thing that's giving us a little cause for concern as well, because as that low sinks southwards, tucked in here, some slightly milder air for a time, but tucked in behind it, notice the dark blue colours, the isobars pointing all the way up to the Arctic. So very cold air sinks in behind that weather system, and particularly on this weather front, this occluded weather front, there could be uh, some snowfall mixed in. If we look at the rain and snowfall on that, you can see that it is a mixture. So most of the snow will be over the hills, but with some intensity and again, depending on exact developments, the weather front could bring some snow at least temporarily down to lower levels. And that could be almost anywhere across from the Midlands northwards. So that is another area we need to really focus in on 
and uh, we'll be again honing our ideas over the next couple of days. So keep up to date with the warnings and keep up to date with the weather forecasts. But generally speaking, Friday and Saturday, a spell of very windy weather, colder air, feeling colder with the strength of the wind. At the moment, yes, we are expecting some snow with that most likely to be across northern hills, but it could at times come down to lower levels as well. So that's the excitement into Friday and Saturday. What happens beyond that? Well, finally, that area of low pressure looks like clearing away as we go through uh, Saturday night and into Sunday. A little ridge in the isobar. So for many, Sunday will at least start dry and fine. But then we have another weather system, uh, another weather front pushing in from east to west during Sunday and Monday. That will bring some patchy rain. And it will be chiefly rain because if we rewind and go through the sequence again, notice how this weather front will also be introducing milder air. So it's cold on Saturday, but this weather front will slowly bring milder conditions in from the west so that by Monday we've lost the blues. Not especially warm, but less cold perhaps. And that setup is kind of looking likely to stick around as we go beyond Monday into next week with low pressure up to the northeast and high pressure down to the southwest, and the UK stuck in between. And that will allow the flow to mostly be coming in from the northwest. That's shown with these charts showing the pressure trend probabilities through next week. Later next week, notice the blue on the chart here for most of next week, indicating that low pressure is likely to be dominant, so the low to the northeast is likely to be closer than the high down to the southwest. We can also look at the probabilistic trends for easterly or westerly winds. Westerly winds are blue on the chart here, so again, dominated by westerly winds for much of next week. No sign of easterly winds, which are the reds on the charts. But that's east-west. What about north-south? Well, again, quite a strong signal here with the blues that northerly winds are likely to dominate through much of next week. So all in all, the pressure pattern is most likely uh, through uh, next week to be like this, with high pressure down to the southwest, and low pressure up to the northeast, allowing the winds to come in from the northwest. The strongest winds are likely to be in the northwest, and with the winds coming down from the northwest, that's where the wettest weather is likely to be. But with this kind of flow, there's always the potential, with that jet stream in that arch position, for other little weather features to come in, a bit like the one we're seeing at the moment, or for Friday and Saturday. So there could be something similar to that through next week, which brings the potential for some strong winds again. But overall, the trends for next week, the wettest weather in the northwest, temperatures around or probably a little bit below average and the potential for further bouts of strong winds. As I said though, make sure you stay up to date with the latest, particularly for Friday and Saturday. Those weather warnings are in place already. Uh, you can read them for yourself by going to the website or downloading our app. And of course, for the very latest, as things uh, develop through Friday and Saturday, make sure you're following the Met Office across social media.